In this video, we explain how to calculate reaction enthalpies with the method of the enthalpies of formation. Right, the goal is to come up with a value for the change in enthalpy in a reaction. So suppose you're, that your reaction is uh, a reagent A to give a product B, and then the low case A and Bs are simply the stoichiometric coefficients of that reaction. Uh, in principle, because enthalpy is a state function, uh, one of the uh, uh, strategies that you could use to calculate the change in reaction enthalpy would be to simply have a measure for the enthalpy of products, have a measure for the enthalpy of reagents, take the difference between those two, and that should be the enthalpy of a reaction. Right? So in principle, uh, we could actually come up with a way to calculate the change in molar enthalpy of the reaction simply as is, uh, the enthalpy of products, which will be B, and this has to be molar, then multiply it by the stoichiometric coefficient B minus the enthalpy of reagents, uh, which will be something like this, molar, multiply it by the stoichiometric coefficient. Again, and this just emerges naturally from the fact that enthalpy is a state function. It doesn't matter how, to, how you go from A to B. The only thing that matters is, is the, what those points are. Okay, so measures of the enthalpy of products and reagents, in principle, will allow you to calculate this. Okay, which is uh, actually fine. This, this should work. A problem, though, is that uh, we generally don't have the absolute total enthalpy of any substance because that would involve knowing what the potential energies of all of the electrons and, uh, and the protons are in those molecules, and that is generally difficult to calculate. It's a, it's a very large number. right? So instead, uh, an idea here would be to uh, try to come up with measures of the enthalpies of molecules that are not absolute uh, enthalpies, but relative enthalpies. Okay, uh, and uh, we can do that. We can use relative enthalpies because we're only trying to determine changes to the enthalpy and not what the value of the absolute enthalpy is. A way to illustrate these absolute versus relative uh, uh, measures and how uh, calculating changes does not depend on whether you're calculating, uh, you're using absolute or relative measures, will be to simply calculate the height between two points. Okay, so suppose that you want to calculate the difference in height between this line uh, A and that line B. Okay, well, uh, the way that you would do this is to say, well, the difference in height, my delta H, is simply going to be equal to the height of products, or B, minus height of reagents H sub A. I just need to know what those heights for A and B are to calculate the change. Well, here is where uh, you can use whatever scale you, uh, you want for the heights of A and B, but notice that the difference between them will be completely uh, irrespective of what scale you use. For example, we could use our zero of heights as this point right here. And we would say, well, uh, the difference, uh, the height of A in this particular scale would be, oh, I don't know, about uh, uh, 30 inches or so, or 20 inches. And uh, the height of B is going to be 21 inches, right? So in that scale, I will have that this will be 21 inches minus 20 inches, that is going to be equal to just one inch. That is the difference in height between A and B. But notice that I've arbitrarily said that the zero of heights is going to be this point. But I could have chosen a different point. For example, I could have chosen the zero uh, simply as this one. And I would, I would say, well, uh, in that particular scale, what I would have is that, well, this still uh, improve. Now, the height of A with respect to that point will be uh, minus 2. The height of B with respect to that point will be minus 1. So then my uh, heights are going to be minus minus uh, two inches here, that's still one inch. Notice that regardless of where I place the zero, the difference in height the two points are exactly the same, is exactly the same, as long as I always have the heights with respect to the same point. I could have chosen sea level as, as a way to determine the heights of these lines, and still the difference between them will, still be, will be one inch. Right, so again, notice that because enthalpies are also state functions, right, uh, if we set the zero, in a place that is common to all molecules, then to calculate changes to the enthalpies uh, would be trivial, right? As long as we always refer all of the enthalpies of the molecules to that common zero. Again, because we're calculating changes, uh, where that zero is is completely irrelevant. Okay, so uh, the way that chemists have agreed on uh, for a zero is something that we called uh, uh, the most stable uh, allotropes of elements uh, in their standard state. Okay, so let's let's unpack that a little bit. Suppose that uh, you think about oxygen. 
okay? and then uh, oxygen uh, comes in many forms. You can have oxygen as uh, ions of oxygen, molecular oxygen, and ozone, for example. These are what we call allotropes of oxygen. Uh, but it turns out that under something that we call standard conditions, which is pure substances and one uh, atmosphere or one bar of pressure, we're going to choose one atmosphere, but I think the, uh, the, the more common definition or the, the more exact definition would be, would be one bar. Uh, if these uh, substances are, are pure and the pressure is one bar, at a temperature of interest, which is generally a room temperature, only one of these is going to be the more stable one. And it turns out that uh, it's going to be oxygen gas, molecular oxygen, the one that is more stable. Okay, so it turns out that the, uh, uh, by convention, we give this uh, most stable allotrope of a pure element under standard conditions a value of zero uh, kilojoules per mole for the enthalpy of formation. Okay, so we're going to come up here with a table in which the enthalpy of formation at standard conditions, that's what that superscript zero is. Uh, this is going to be zero kilojoules per mole by uh, definition. This is going to be our sea level for enthalpies for the most stable allotropes of constituent elements. So for oxygen, that will be O2. Nitrogen, for nitrogen, the most stable allotrope under standard conditions and admin temperature will be nitro molecular nitrogen as well. For carbon, it will actually be graphite. Uh, for hydrogen, it will be H2 gas, and so forth. We could con uh, con uh, construct a table here and then uh, make that be our serial. All right, so then uh, the only thing that we uh, then need to do is try to come up with enthalpy of formations of all molecules with respect to that serial. And the question is, well, how do we actually do that? Well, let's think about uh, how water would work, right? So the idea would be, now that we have defined where the serial is, let's try to define what the enthalpy uh, of formation of water is with respect to that zero. Well, uh, so the way that you do this is you simply uh, come up with your molecule of interest, which will be water uh, as a liquid, from the uh, constituent elements, which you have uh, hydrogen and oxygen. Okay, and then uh, this is simply going to be H2 plus one half of O2, which is a gas, uh, to generate water. And this is what we call the formation reaction of water because this is forming uh, water from the most stable allotropes of the constituent elements. Okay, so the enthalpy for this reaction then would be as follows. Okay, notice that if we use that expression now, but now we use enthalpies of formation, right, that will be just simply the enthalpy of formation of water, which is products, minus the enthalpy of formation of reagents multiplied by the appropriate stoichiometric coefficients, right? So what we say is that, well, this is simply going to be the enthalpy of formation of water in the standard state, H2O liquid, minus the enthalpy of formation of reagents uh, according to, or multiplied by the stoichiometric coefficients, right? So that will be the enthalpy of formation of H2, which is a gas, the standard state, plus one half, which is the stoichiometric coefficient for oxygen, multiplied by the enthalpy of formation of O2, which is a gas. Okay? So, uh, if we're able to measure the enthalpy of this reaction, maybe by doing calorimetry, right, the enthalpy of that reaction will be equal to these values. But notice that there's something very interesting here, because we have chosen to generate water from the most stable allotropes of the constituent elements. We actually already know that these numbers that we have right here, those are zero by definition. That is actually what we have agreed upon. Right? So notice that if you're able to measure the enthalpy for this reaction, that will give you directly the enthalpy of formation for water, okay, which is something that, something that you can tabulate. All right, so actually this reaction is known. It turns out that uh, the enthalpy for that reaction is minus 393.5 kilojoules per mole, right? And because this is the, uh, the formation reaction, then uh, uh, the formation enthalpy for water will be directly the enthalpy, uh, the reaction enthalpy for, again, this formation reaction. Okay, so then we can continue to build here our table and say that, well, uh, these are all enthalpies of, forma uh, of formation of substances. Now these will be molecules. Okay, so for water, uh, when it's a liquid, this number happens to be 393.5 kilojoules per mole. And then you can do the same thing for uh, any molecule that you wish. For example, if we now change this instead of water to CO2, 
the way that you would do this would be as follows. Now your product is CO2, which is a gas. And then you have to uh, build this from the most stable allotropes of the constituent elements, right? So we have carbon and oxygen. The most stable allotrope of carbon is graphite. Okay, so that would be uh, graphite plus oxygen, and the most stable allotrope would be molecular oxygen O2. That would be uh, the reaction that forms CO2 from the most stable allotropes of the constituent elements. So then I can come here and say, well, the enthalpy of that reaction, which I could in principle measure, okay, is simply going to be equal to uh, the enthalpy of formation of CO2, which is a gas, minus the enthalpy of formation of reagents multiplied by the stoichiometric coefficients, right? So here I would have that that is simply the enthalpy of formation of graphite, plus uh, the enthalpy of formation of all uh, the other reagent, which is the enthalpy of formation of uh, O2, which is a gas. Okay, so again, if I'm able to measure the enthalpy of this reaction, then uh, in principle I should be able to determine what the enthalpy of formation of CO2 is uh, directly, because we have agreed that that value is zero for graphite, is the most stable allotrope of carbon, and that value is also zero for oxygen. Okay, so uh, we can do this, uh, uh, measure this enthalpy of the reaction maybe using calorimetry, and that number happens to be uh, minus 285.8 kilojoules per mole. So you come here and then uh, you have now water and carbon dioxide, that number happens to be minus 285.8 kilojoules per mole. Okay, like this, you can actually come up with a table for all molecules that you can think of. Right, and some of these enthalpies of formation will be negative, some of them will be positive, depending on how much energy it takes to build the molecule from the constituent elements. Now, the important thing here is that if you have this table, now you have values of enthalpies for all of the molecules. And what that means is that for any chemical reaction that you can have, you can use all of these enthalpies of formations in tables to simply uh, take products minus reagents and calculate the enthalpy of a reaction. Okay, and these are our relative enthalpies that now we can use to very conveniently calculate uh, the enthalpy of a chemical reaction. Okay, so again, our equation now is going to be as follows. The enthalpy of any chemical reaction using the enthalpy formation is going to be simply the sum of the enthalpy of formation of products multiply by the stoichiometric coefficients, minus the sum of the enthalpies of formation, which are molar and standard for reagents, multiply by the stoichiometric coefficients. Okay, and again, uh, tables do exist in which people have looked at the enthalpies of uh, formation of all molecules that you can think of so that now you have those molecules in, in involved in a chemical reaction, then you can simply use this expression to calculate how the change in enthalpy in the reaction will be. Okay, here, here we simply uh, have uh, determined uh, the values for the enthalpy of formation for water, liquid, and CO2 gas, and then by definition we know that uh, those values are zero for the most stable allotropes of elements. Right, so to close up this long video, we're actually just going to do a problem to illustrate how useful and how it is easy it is uh, to calculate reaction enthalpies with enthalpies of formation once you actually have the enthalpies of formation. Right, so then the problem would be, please determine uh, what the enthalpy of the following reaction would be. Okay, so we have uh, methane, which is a gas, reacting with two molecules of CO2, which is a gas, to generate malonic acid, which is this molecule, which is a solid. Okay, so then uh, the way that you do this is say, well, uh, the enthalpy of uh, the reaction molar is simply going to be uh, equal to uh, the sum of the enthalpy of formation of products multiplied by the stoichiometric coefficients minus the enthalpy of formation of reagents multiplied by the stoichiometric coefficients. So I simply look at the reaction and say, well, my products is just malonic acid, so that would be the enthalpy of formation of malonic acid C3H4O4. And then uh, this is going to be minus uh, the enthalpy of formation of reagents, which is just uh, methane, 
gas, and then the enthalpy formation of uh, CO2. which is gas, and notice that because the stoichiometric coefficient of CO2 is a 2, I need to multiply that by 2. All right, so uh, here in this table we only have uh, CO2, but the values for methane and malonic acid are known. Okay, so for methane, the value for the enthalpy formation is minus 74.8 kilojoule per mole. And then for malonic acid, C3H4O4, uh, solid, this uh, value of the enthalpy formation is minus 891.1 kilojoules per mole. And again, all those are simply enthalpies of formation at the standard state. Well, so now we actually have all the data that we need. The enthalpy of the reaction will be the enthalpy formation of malonic acid, which we have right there, minus 891.1 kilojoules per mole, minus the enthalpy of formation of reagents multiplied by the stoichiometric coefficients, methane, that is minus 74.8 kilojoules per mole. And then to this I have to add the enthalpy formation of uh, CO2, which I have here as minus 393.5 kilojoules per mole. Okay, again, notice how simple this is. You simply take a uh, look at the reaction, look at the stoichiometry, Take the enthalpy of products, subtract the enthalpy of reagents, everything multiplied by the uh, appropriate stoichiometric coefficients, and simply that gives you the enthalpy of the reaction. So the only problem here is whether you have these tables or not. And there are tables that are very extensive containing uh, enthalpy of formation of most molecules that you can be interested in. All right, so uh, the final number that we get out of this uh, reaction is this it will be an exothermic reaction. Right, and the value of the reaction exothermicity is minus 29.3 kilojoules per mole. Okay, so let's me, let me summarize this video. Uh, in this video, we have seen how to use the method of enthalpy of formation to calculate uh, the reaction enthalpy. Uh, uh, a difficulty with the enthalpy of formation is that uh, you have to recognize that those are just relative measures of the enthalpy of a given substance. And to be able to de uh, determine those relative enthalpies, you have to define an arbitrary zero, which we simply uh, have as the most stable allotropes of elements at the standard state. Okay, so what then you find here is that using those standard enthalpies formation, then you can come, come up with the uh, reaction enthalpy. Because you're using the standard uh, properties, then this will also be standard. Okay, and again, what standard means is simply that you're using pure substances, and the pressure uh, happens to be one atmosphere or one mile.